The top prep football players in South Dakota are taking it outdoors for the 2019 South Dakota Football All-Star Game. That's because renovations to the Dakota Dome are the cause and will also necessitate moving the state championship games in November to the Dana J. Dykehouse Stadium. A little warmer today than it will be in November. They played in Vermilion at the Veterans Sports Complex. Blue team versus red team. Neither team really matters because, you know, they're just having fun. Opening blue team drive. Caleb Schensel of Northwestern pulls that pass down from future Jackrabbit Karst Hunter of Miller as they take an early 8-0 lead. Ensuing red team drive. Check out the acrobatic play here off the tip from Eddie Price of Del Rapids. The Price is right for an interception as his team takes over, and they would keep it rolling. Trey King of Irene Wakanda finds Devlin McManus of Roosevelt wide open in the back of the end zone as Team Blue took a 17-0 to lead as they leapt into the air. A good day for them. And another touchdown for the Blue team, this time on the legs of, Par of Brookings standout Parker Beers. He dives in for the score as the Blue team got out to a 26-0 lead. Red would get a little bit of momentum late in the half. Manny Galosa of Sturgis takes down the ball carrier and takes the ball out with it for the fumble recovery. Final score doesn't really matter because everybody was having fun. Congrats to everybody and good luck as you move on to college or your next pursuits. The Sioux Falls Storm faced one of their biggest games of the season tonight as they return to the scene of last season's most disappointing game. It's been a little more than 11 months since the Storm fell on the final minute at Iowa 42-38 in the United Bowl. Both teams have come back strong this season. The Barnstormers, the defending IFL champs, are 11-1. Their lone loss coming in Sioux Falls when Kent Shelby hauled in this miraculous tip ball touchdown as time expired to give the Storm a 36-32 victory back on April 20th. The winner of tonight's game will be in position to claim the number two seed in the IFL playoffs, which brings with it a bye and the right to host the conference title game in two weeks. And since we could have a rematch between these two teams by then, and considering how each of the last two games came down to the final minute, it's home field the Storm sorely want to have. You know, you have one goal set, and when you, come, when you fall short of that, you know, it leaves a sour taste in your mouth. And, it just, you always go into what is, what you could have done better, or things would have went one way or another. And you got to live with that. And uh, you can only uh, deal with it by preparing for the what, what's to come. It, it used to be, if a team turned the ball over against us, we'd really pounce on them. And now it's, it's they could turn it over and we might turn it back over. Um, and, and so we need to be more consistent. We need to be able to go out and make the easy plays look easy. You know, right now it's kind of, hold your breath and see if we're going to be able to do those things. And, and that's never been our, our motto. Kickoff coming up in about a half hour. We'll have full highlights coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. Storm wrap up the regular season, by the way, next week against Bismarck. Two of the Minnesota Twins' most highly touted newcomers helped deliver a series opening win at Detroit last night. C.J. Crone hit a game-tying home run, followed by Nelson Cruz hitting the go-ahead bomb, which spurred the Twins to a 6-3 win. Though Cruz has missed some time with injury, it's safe to say they've each been worthwhile acquisitions as the pair of combined hit 23 home runs while driving in 63. And they batted third and fourth in the lineup today of Game 2 of the series with Detroit. Jorge Polanco, uh, he doesn't think this ball's fair in the first inning, but... Good news for him and Twins fans, it is. It scores Max Kepler. Minnesota's up one to nothing. That lead only lasted about an inning because Jacoby Jones took that pitch from Kyle Gibson for a ride. It's a three-run shot, and Detroit leads three to one. Back on the Twins, one of the guys I just mentioned, Crone with a base knock back up the middle. Runner coming home will score, and Minnesota is back to within a run. It's three to two. Now Detroit trying to extend that lead later in the game. You know, it's kind of crazy that Byron Buxton just makes this look routine. That's how good he is out in the center, but that's anything but an easy catch. Kept him off the board for a while, but later in the game, Jones back up and Jones back out. His second home run. Detroit looking to be on their way to a win. They lead 9-3. And finally, shout out to the Edgerton Southwest Christian softball team. Yesterday, they captured the Minnesota State A softball championship with a 4-1 victory over Badger Greenbush Middle River. Now, they'd finished runner-up in each of the last two years before breaking through yesterday for their first championship since 2016. Sierra Van Dyke allowing just six hits and sealing the title in style with a strikeout right there. Congrats to Andrew Fleischman and his team on the championship. We'll have Canaries highlights and again, those Sioux Falls Storm in Iowa highlights tonight at 10. Back in a moment.